All right, so we're going to work with a little epoxy today. These are Chris's shelves and he wanted them coated and I'm just sealing them because um, when you got nice flat shelves, if you put epoxy on just one side and you uh, the wood's not completely dry, the water will evaporate out of the bottom and they'll bend. If this is the side that's epoxy, the ends will bend up on you. So when I do them, I always seal the top, the bottom, all the sides. I put my seal coats over all the wood and then I flood coat just the top. So we did one side, I sealed it. I sealed this edge. I'm gonna do this side now. And then after that's all done, I gotta do three seal coats and then the flood coat. So this is just the first seal coat. You wanna flip one, show the other side? No, this okay. is fine. So zero that out and we'll mix up some epoxy. This is stone coat. I'm gonna go uh, 100 grams. This is a two to one epoxy and there's 100. So we need 100 of that and 50 of the hardener. You're actually supposed to mix this epoxy by volume, not by weight, but since I got the scale, I'm doing it by weight. You know what? I'll just split it up this way. Oh, you got to Yeah, it's going gonna, gonna to be. What I'll do is I'll mix it a little bit. Oh, there's a stick. And then I'll split it between the two cups and mix it some more and split it again. And it's the easiest way when you don't have enough capacity. You can see a little, what's the word, chatoyancy when you mix it? Yeah. Well, you gotta you gotta get it mixed really well. So scrape the sides, scrape the bottom, switch it between cups, mix it in one cup, mix it in the other cup. To make sure you get all of what you measured. To make sure everything gets mixed, yeah. The larger container you usually use that it just dries and peels out. You could. It measure. doesn't. It never dries and peels out. Yeah. Oh, okay. This epoxy isn't like the ones that peel out easy. This stuff sticks to everything. So it's already on my hands. <laughs> That's why you wear gloves. And you gotta mix epoxy really well. It should not be cloudy at all when you're done mixing. It should be clear all the way to the bottom. This stuff, um, this is the uh, casting epoxy from Stone Coat. And you got about 10 hours of working time with this. It stays thin for a long time. Um, it stays soft for 10 hours and then it hardens up. So it's not like I'm in a rush. They do have quick set epoxies, but I like working with this because I don't care if it takes a long time. I'm just gonna coat these and leave them here overnight. By tomorrow, they, they'll be ready to sand. And I'll sand them down and then I'll put another coat on. All right. So, instead of wasting paintbrushes, just smear it around with your hands. 
All you got to do, the first coat, the first seal coat, you want to use a thin epoxy and you want to make sure you get all of the wood covered because this is what stops the seal coats stop it when you do a flood coat, you won't get any bubbles coming up. So it's real important to make sure that you get it all sealed up. It really brings out the grain. It does. Did the brush in the freezer work? That was for the uh, VOC stuff. Yeah. This, the stone coat epoxies, they have no fumes. It does have a little bit of a musty smell to it, but there's no VOC fumes that you have to worry about. You do it in an enclosed enclosure, enclosed area, it doesn't matter. So now I'm just gonna take the extra and I'm gonna wipe it off the top and just hit the sides with it. What I'm doing is I'm just getting my palm covered and then running my palm down the side. The side already has a little epoxy on from when I did the other side. So now I'm getting a little more on. Don't call me a little moron. <laughs> All right, so that'll just soak in now. And it's going to get sanded after this. And Chris put nice sharp edges on this, so if you want to make the epoxy flow over the edges and get a nice coat on the sides, when you flood coat, you need a rounded corner. You can't use a, a flat like he's got on these, but I'll make it work. Okay, here's Chris's shelves after the first seal coat. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to scuff them up with some 220 grit paper and uh, then put another seal coat on them. So that's it, you just scuff them up. You can see all the little imperfections when you do that. And then seal them again. I'll show you that in a minute. I'm gonna go get another one to do it. Okay, this one actually has kind of a drip on it. I don't know if you can see it right here. Pick it up for the camera. But there's like a line that comes around and curls around. That was a drip of epoxy that didn't flatten out. So this is where you got to flatten it out. You can also see right here, there's a huge hole. See it? I get my, my thumb in there. It's really deep. So that's going to have to be filled with epoxy too. So the second coat of epoxy is pretty much like the first one. Make sure you cover everything. I did go a little uh, heavier on the epoxy. I, I went a full ounce per square foot. There are four boards here that I'm doing, so you'll see me bouncing around a bit. But um, 
Spread the epoxy, make sure you cover everything, cover all the sides. Uh, with the second coat, you do hit it with a blowtorch um, just to pop the bubbles. You'll see me do that in a minute here. Um, you make sure everything's covered, spread it out evenly. You're just trying to seal the wood so still. Any places where you see the epoxy soaking into the wood, uh, a crack, anything like that, make sure you put a little extra there. That's what you're trying to seal up. At this point, the surface of the wood is sealed, but you'll have pinholes and cracks and things, and you got to get those filled with epoxy and sealed so that when you do your seal coat, they're already smooth. Um, that's how you get a perfect uh, flood coat. Sorry, when you do your flood coat, you have to have them all sealed up by then. And that's how you get the perfect flood coat. So here you see me running around and moving in fast motion. There's the torch. I pop the bubbles. And that's about it. Second coat done. Okay, so here we have Chris's shelves. And if you look, you can see like right here. See that dimple right there? You can see it in the light shining. And there's another one here. That's where the epoxy is still soaking down into the wood. This is the bottom of the other shelf. And right here you can see, I think you can see it. There's a, uh, there's a deep gouge there, a crack. And then on this last shelf right here, let's see if I can get the light on that. You can see that it, the epoxy's gone down in the crack. So that just means you need more seal coats in order to make this work right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sand it down a bit and then um, put another seal coat on. This is 220 grit. There's drips right here. This is the bottom and you can see where I'm sanding. There's drips right there. You got to sand those smooth. So whenever you sand the bottom, make sure you take So once it's mixed up real well, I'm going to dribble some right in these cracks first just to get them filled so it starts soaking in there. So, take your blowtorch. All this is doing is popping the bubbles. it for a day now, harden up, and we'll sand it. And if we've got it smooth and there's no more pinholes, then we can do a flood coat. If there's still pinholes, then we do another one of these. Till tomorrow. Okay, so the third seal coat's been done, and you can see right here there's some areas that aren't sealed yet. Right there there's a little bit. On this one right here, can you see that? So there's areas, here's one. There's areas that didn't seal even after three seal coats. So on these two pieces, I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna put another seal coat because there's some big areas there. On these two, for the most part, they sealed. This one, it's got a little spot right there. I don't know if you can see that or not. And there's another, there's a hole right there. That didn't seal. So those, I'm gonna use these, these are um, fill sticks for wood. So I don't have one that matches the color. 
So I'm just going to use this one. It's just a little spot so it'll be dark and on here it'll come pretty close to matching. So that's what we're going to do next. And all you do to make these work, there's the hole. I just keep the stick a little. And fill the hole. Another one right there. I just want the wax to fill the cracks. Get around that other side. There's a big one there. Just like that. Fill it in, you can heat it up a little bit just to make sure it seals the whole thing. I'm trying to get an angle here so I can see if these are sealed. It looks like it is, but I'm just not taking any chances. That should do it for those. Like I said, that other one, I'm going to do another seal coat on it. So nothing's ever easy. I didn't have a razor blade. I'm just going to use a knife. All you do is scrape it flat. sand it a little bit after you scrape all the loose stuff. You only want the wax left in the actual hole. You don't want it on the top or on the sides. You just want it in the hole. So I'm just scraping all the extra off so it's left in the hole and then I'll hit this with a piece of sandpaper just to make sure there's none. Alright, so now i got a used piece of 220 sandpaper. That's all there is to it. That one's good. Once you hit it with the sandpaper, you can't even tell the wax is there. So yeah, I'm gonna do one more seal coat on all four pieces. One ounce per square foot, so you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven square feet. I need seven to eight ounces. I'm going to start with just a little. Now when you're doing these coats, it's not real critical, but you, it's usually good if you make sure everything's level. I know right now mine's not. Um, when you do the final flood coat, you have to be absolutely level. If you're not level, it's all going to roll to one side and it's all going to roll off one side, which is not a good thing. And that's all there is to it. A good seal coat. Make sure it covers everything. Check all your edges. Make sure you didn't miss anything. So I'm going to go around again and do that. 
And then I'm going to get the blowtorch out and hit it one time with the torch just to pop any bubbles that there might be. Which that's not really critical with seal coats because you can just sand them out before you put your flood coat on. But I like to do them anyway. So it's time for a flood coat on these. I've sealed them up. I've sanded them down again. You can see these are, I sanded the tops on them. I sealed up with wax where there was a little opening where the stuff was soaking in still. See how right here it was soaking in. So I used my burn-in stick and I sealed that. Those are ready for a flood coat. That one there, this is actually done. I'm not putting a flood coat on it. It's fairly smooth. It's completely sealed. And that's all I really wanted on that. That's for a laptop. So you can put your laptop on it without burning your lap. This one here is completely sealed. It's ready for a flood coat. There were a couple places it was still letting stuff in. I sealed them up with the burn-in stick with this thing. Where is it? There it is. It's called a fill stick. So we should be good to go. I'm going to get this out of the way. I've got my epoxy ready. This is the uh, heat resistant countertop epoxy. This is one part to one part. I'm going to mix up uh, 18 ounces. I need three ounces per square foot of surface. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six square feet roughly, just approximating. So 18 ounces ought to do it. That's what I'm going to mix up here. I'm going to tape the edges here so it doesn't start flowing off the edges for a couple hours. Just because that'll, that'll be better. This is a trick. It keeps the epoxy on the top until it thickens up a bit. And then you can peel the tape off and let the epoxy flow. You just want to make sure you got a good sticky edge on the tape so it seals, especially in the corners. That's where it always leaks. All right, now that I moved everything, I got to check and make sure it's level again. Or level that way. And we're pretty level that way. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour this out on these. And then I'm going to take my gloved hand, which I will be wearing gloves when I start pouring this. And I'm just going to smooth it out so it covers the whole surface. And I want roughly six ounces on each board, so about a third of what I've mixed up. So, I mean, even if you get air in it, just make sure you mix it really well. All right, so a third of this. Was about a third. And then spread it out. I'm going to cover the whole piece. Usually you use a quarter inch notched uh, trowel. I'm not doing that here. These are too small for that. But I will make sure I get all the sides. Okay, so once you got it on your part, I use my glove and you just kind of have to feel where the epoxy is and just kind of try and spread it out even. Um, the quarter inch notch trowel works great for this, but you can do it with your gloved hand. You can actually feel how thick it is. See, like I need a little more there. I'll just push some over. Okay, that piece is good. 
So then the last thing, well, not next to the last thing, take a blowtorch and just very lightly, you can see the bubbles pop when you do this. You can kind of bend down and look at the surface. You want a nice mirror finish. Okay, so right now it's 3.42 p.m. So four or five, so about six o'clock. I'll come out, check this again. Look for any specks that fall in it. Here, let's go around, you can see what it looks like now. Come on here, you. You can see we got a nice glassy finish on that. See how smooth that is? That's what you want. You can see there's still a couple of spots like right there where the epoxy is doing something. Keep an eye on those. What I do is I touch them like that. and then just let it self-level again. You can hit it with the torch again. That'll help level it out. Let's do that. So you can see the bubbles popping when I do this. So I'll probably torch it two or three more times. Okay, so it's been a couple hours here. Show you what we got here. You can see no more, I mean everything is just perfectly flat now. You can see that light as it moves around. I see right there a fly got in it. I got to pick him out. That's what you got to be careful of. This one's smooth all the way down. This one looks pretty good. Perfectly flat. So we'll give it a try here and peel the tape, let it flow. And get that fly out of there first. I hate flies. Okay, so he's out. I'll just hit that with the torch to make it level back out. That's all it takes. All right, let me get some gloves on here. We'll peel this tape off. Carefully. I don't want it to touch the top at all. You got to peel it down and away. So I always peel it like this. That brings it over the edge. bump this one. I shouldn't have done that. Got to be real careful. Okay, I got all the tape off of that one. Let go of my glove. Down there, 
out of the way and do this one. Look at that. Epoxy all over my fingers now. Now I take my original epoxy thing and I get some epoxy on my fingers and I just rub it in on the sides. You want to coat the whole side. There's another fly in here. I just heard him buzzing past my head. That's bad. Get out of here, fly. So I can hear it dripping on the plastic already. The plastic on the floor. So what I'll do is I'll come back for the next few hours. I'll come back like once an hour and I'll take that uh, popsicle stick and I'll just go under the edge here and get all the drips. Just scrape them off. Now you'll see when Chris made these shelves on these edges over here, he made sharp edges. Sharp edges don't really work for epoxy flowing over them. These edges here are rounded. These here are sharp. So the epoxy won't flow over them real well, so you really have to kind of smooth it out when you get the epoxy on there. That's why I'm doing this with the container. Make sure you get a lot of epoxy on there. Okay, so it's been 24 hours, and uh, these came out really nice. And you can see that light reflecting in it. These are perfectly flat. Look at that. Let's see if I can get a better angle here so you can see the window reflecting in it or something maybe. There you go. So that I give you a feel for it. So they dried good. The top is good. Um, these are kind of stuck. This one not so much. So what I'll do is See the bottom, you can see you get a little bit of a, I mean, I did scrape it, but you still get a little bit left there. So I got to sand this off. But uh, it should be easy to do that. Now, when you sand these, uh, this surface, it's going to take a couple of weeks before it's fully cured. So what I'll do is I'll take it and I will uh, put a towel down flip it upside down on that and then sand it. You know, a nice soft surface. So you're not damaging it at all, but man, they came out good. I think Chris will be happy. So, hey Chris, your shelves are ready. <laughs> anyway, folks, I think I'm gonna skip showing you how to sand, because, I mean, if you, if you can't do that, you're not gonna be able to make shelves anyway, but uh, yeah, these came out nice. It worked out good. So this is this is the part I like right here. Look at I don't know if you can see that, but that hole is about a half inch deep and it's all epoxy now. So these these are not bad. Alright, well, that's how you do epoxy shelves. So thanks for watching. <laughs>